militant one. Our bond led us to victory. But it was not the victory I long for. Is it your wish that I continue with the story of my promise? Indeed. It was the miracle's will that made the bell ring. But it was the lady's sin that brought the curse down upon us. The lady. The most beautiful of women who lived in the palace by the lake. Lived to admire her own beauty, which she believed to be unnaturally divine. The reflection of the lake in which she admired herself returned her own beauty with yet more intensity and splendor, keeping her spellbound for days. Desiring that reflected perfection for herself, she prayed to the lake that no one else might see that reflection. As she looked at her reflection one more time, she saw her face distort to the sound of a terrible tolling that rose up from the lake's sunken bell. Do you wish me to join you in your next confrontation? There you shall find me, and in communion we shall fight. Billowing clouds of dust herald your arrival. Dust in the air that is born from the erosion of the walls, the statues, and our own bones. These stones heard so many sins that they could do no more than succumb, shuddering before their guilty echoes. Echoes that could not bear the seclusion that I imposed upon them, and that escaped from me. Crawling along these walls, eroding them until their immaculate ashes buried us all. Penitent one, you will now reveal your sins, those that your tears can never atone for. Be witness to this vigil before my final journey. I, Radames, spent my long life listening to the confessions of so many burdened hearts. 
even after death, I could still hear the echo of their mournful voices, begging to be heard again, pleading for confession. But their pain never managed to bring tears to my eyes. One of those echoes, those incessant voices, was the very voice of the miracle who commanded me to guard its sacred regret. I obeyed, and it was then that my tears did flow. Penitent one, you who come to witness the miracle, behold. The memory of him still hurts. So it was that a humble married couple, torn apart by their inability to conceive a child, entrusted themselves in their utter desperation to the miracle. A miracle whose light seemed to have gone out in all our hearts. For having long ceased to bathe us in its benevolent radiance, we believed it extinct. The dying day already puts out its celestial light, causing my eyelids to droop. Let the miracle cast open its black gates, so I might venture to where that terrible dream, from which one never wakes, awaits. Penitent one, you have encountered one of the three regrets. The first part of the testimony of the birth has been revealed to you, and the eminent sculptor figure of the father has descended. Find the other two guardians. Penitent one, you the first part of the... Find the other...
wish to purge yourself of your guilt. So be it. The sacrament has been completed. Now go in peace. Penitent one, this is no place for anyone. Can you not see that death breathes the very air that dries our throats? That it walks in our footsteps? You cannot even hear the cries for the dead. For here, even crying is forbidden. I will remain in the shadows, sheltering behind these bars, 
so you cannot look upon my diseased countenance. But although no one has ever managed to find out who he really is, I can reveal to you a name. Casto. How ominous that name sounds when spoken in these shadowy enclaves. I may have something for you. If so, be sure to take it and go. Go now. I may have something for you. Do you not notice how death enfolds us and shelters us? Do you not notice how it dries up the very tears in our eyes? It is my prison, my companion, my guardian. For all that is dead accompanies me, and all that is not yet dead will soon die and wither by my side. What sins did I commit to merit such a heavy penance? I am the ruin of what I once was. Cursed with the ever more bitter need to survive, I ended up stealing in the foulest of ways. I stole from the rich. I stole from the poor. I even stole from the dead. What crime can there be in taking possession of what no longer has a master? Leave me alone. I feel something devouring me inside like flies swarming over a dead body. And so it was that I managed to get into a house that appeared to be uninhabited. Inside I found an elderly woman lying on her bed. She had been dead for some time. There was no one standing vigil over her. She was alone. Alone in the deep sleep of death. The fearful stench was so intense that it seemed to emanate from that rigid body and mingle with the light that drifted in through the immaculately pale curtains from the outside street lamps, creating the most dismal of atmospheres I had ever experienced. It was the chamber of death itself. Oh, death, who is ever by my side, you will not have to wait much longer. I robbed the old woman in her bed. I took from her what was no longer hers, but rather belonged to death itself. 
When I reached my hiding place, I was racked with terrible pangs of guilt that have not ceased to intensify and ever torment my body and mind. What is this trembling you bring me, O oh death? What is this coldness that I feel both inside and out? Doth thee already seek me? I robbed the old woman in her bed. I took from her... to purge yourself of your guilt. So be it. The sacrament has been completed. Now go in peace. A new flower on my mantle. It is yours. I feel the guilt flow into me on the wings of frigid tremors, and my spirit seems numb, submissive. I will continue to serve thee as my purpose dictates. Penitent one, return when the guilt scorches your brow. I will free you from your burden, for that is my purpose. for your silver altarpiece.
Welcome to this palace. How silent, how mundane these luxurious chambers have been. Halls that were once frequented by the most distinguished of visitors. They all ended up staying here, captives. Trapped, petrified like golden statues, prisoners of the very riches they craved. Dance now with my steel, penitent one. We will embroider your flesh in sacred torment, in a tapestry of blood and gold. On guard. Be witness to this vigil before my final journey. I, Orospina, am the daughter of the looms, of the mantle of gold and fine silver and scarlet and white. Eldest sister of the confraternity of embroiderers, ancient secret of the needle and the thread. Where I go, naught shimmers with gold. And my graceful steel will never again adorn the air with its elegant silver calligraphy. Penitent one, you who come to witness the miracle, behold. But their plea was so humble and true that the miracle, whose lofty reasons are beyond our earthly ken, finally stirred from its slumber, aroused from its repose, and moved by the sweet melody of such noble supplications, it blessed this couple of devout believers, whose faith had never wavered, granting them the child they so desired. 
balm and golden caress of twilight invites me to close my eyes. Let the miracle cast open its black gates so I might venture to where that terrible dream from which one never wakes awaits. Penitent one, you have known the second of the regrets, and with it, another part of the testimony. The figure of the mother has descended, full of mercy. Anon, the upper part of the city, separated from the rest by the miracle's design, will join the rest. Find the last guardian. I live again inside this merciless and cold metallic casing. I live in this cage in the shape of what was long ago my body. I live and I feel that I am directed by forces that undermine mine own will. I live although when I close my eyes in the intimate darkness behind my eyelids I am still dead.
be witness to this vigil before my final journey. My body has been returned to me at last. I am now master of this flesh, of this trembling, of this agony. How sweet the pain when it is our own, penitent one. You who came to witness the miracle, behold. But the miracle, who bestows and wrests away its grace with inscrutable agency, saw its will tarnished in its prolonged absence. Erring in its newly created work, it conferred on that child as much its own as that of another. The blessing of deformity, it spread throughout our land, like a contagion. Its accursed seeds germinating like the wounds that sprout upon the scourged flesh of the repentant. The dying day already puts out its celestial light, causing my eyelids to droop. Let the miracle cast open its black gates, so I might venture to wear that terrible dream from which one never wakes, awaits. The full testimony has been revealed to you, and the counterfigure of the witness has at last descended. The three great stone figures of the family have humbled themselves before us all. Raise your eyes as the dazzling beauty of the upper reaches of the City of the Blessed Name welcomes you. Now go forth. Let not doubt leave its vexatious mark upon you.
wish to birth Soviet. The sacrament has been completed. Now go in peace. Upper reaches of our city, once unreachable and unfathomable, have descended. Countless legends tell of the many secrets that the heights have hidden and laid watch over for seeming eternities. Can it be the city that prostrates itself before so many parishioners, beckoning us to witness the birth of the child more closely? What holiness lies before us? Cast your eyes upon our shop window. We have no more items left, but you never know what may turn up on these paths. Pray come back later, penitent.
Go oh, now. I may have something. Oh, so much death all around me. So many maggots creeping over so many dead bodies immersed in the mire. So many flies announce the arrival of the rotting queen with their mournful dances and incessant buzzing.
Much time has passed since your last visit, Penitent One. You must know that I am a blind man, and yet the miracle has seen fit not to plunge me into utter darkness. More than ever, its divine light shines within me. A fiery glow that outlines with meek compunction the features of Our Lady at the very moment we witnessed the most wondrous act we were to behold in our humble lives. All who were there were blinded by a light, a fleeting flash that compelled us all to avert our gaze, thus casting us into deepest darkness. The remnants of that radiance engraved upon me the merciful visage, beautiful in both form and proportion, of Our Lady. Never could I forget it, for I was branded by that fire that burns perpetually within mine own eyes. May the hands of the miracle guide thee, Penitent One.